bloody fantastic. Hey, hello everybody, my name is Good Boy, and welcome to a video on the five or so uh, best heroes uh, coming up in the meta that you should probably play. Uh, before we begin the video, please give it a like, please hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber, and of course, hit that glorious notification bell. It's a wonderful thing, and you don't want to miss my content, so please click it straight away. Also, there is a little bit of a giveaway at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Heroes that are good to play right now. Um, this is very interesting. 7.21 has definitely brought about four or five new heroes that were okay before, but now they're faring exceptionally well. Um, and I'll get into different reasons why. One of them is kind of exactly the same as before, but eh, we'll jump into that. Um, but the meta is definitely shifting, and there are certain heroes which, particularly in the lower skill brackets, are doing very, very well and are well worth playing. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to break this one down. The first one I'm going to start with actually is kind of uh, in slightly reverse order that I want to do it. Um, but we'll start with Visage. So Visage now currently has literally the best win rate in the game at 60%. Um, that is, and it's holding at 60%, uh, is sort of fluctuating slightly by a few percentage points. So you've got to actually ask the question, uh, looking at the change log, uh, why on earth is that happening? Because if you look at the change log, level 10 talent was reduced from 125 cast range to 100. Level 20 talent was reduced from plus 60 move, from of movement speed to plus 50. And level 20 talent tree was increased from 15 soul assumption damage to per charge to plus 20. So besides that level 20 talent tree change, which is a slight buff, is generally the hero has been nerfed, if anything. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, item changes are, are kind of worse as well. So uh, Vladimir's offering had the headdress drop from it in replace for a recipe that, as it turns out, costs the same amount of money. So they've just nerfed the item, which is so annoying because headdress is such good value, particularly as an early item. Uh, just as an example, you could you could argue um, other core items are slightly better, but they're really kind of about the same. So the only thing I can say in Visage's defense is fundamentally the hero mechanics are about the same. It's just the talent changes are slightly worse, and uh, the general change to like items it would use are slightly worse for some of them, and maybe slightly better for others. But if you think about it, it's kind of a slap on the wrist. It's not like a really bad nerf, and obviously it's not like a really great buff either. So that means you can still exploit the whole heavy pushing strategy, and this is something that boosters do a lot, um, is they use Visage, because with Visage, you can pretty much secure a game in 15 minutes, as I've shared with you with it. And despite the Rax buff and the tower buffs with armor and stuff like that, it's still basically the same viable strategy. That doesn't, that fundamentally is not gonna make that much of a difference. So that is the meta, as it were, for Visage. So Visage can still do what it needs to do, and boosters like it a lot because they can end the game so quickly. So, so that's kind of the, the threat with Visage. And, and I, one of my things I actually recommend, particularly if you're in like higher skill brackets, but in any skill bracket really, if you haven't calibrated yet already, banning Visage as your first hero and ruining boosters is hilarious. Um, so, you know, that, and it kind of just wrecks games and stops them doing that. But that, that's, that's kind of Visage there. All the other heroes I'm going to get into, now in a slightly reverse order, um, have been buffed at least partially in some ways or another. Uh, and that's in part as to why they're being so successful. So let's, let's move on to Night Stalkers. The Night Stalker has a pretty solid 55% win rate. In fact, the next couple of heroes will have a very similar win rate. Uh, Night Stalker had Hunter in the Night movement speed bonus increase from 20 to 35 to 22 to 40 uh, percent. They removed Scepter, which doesn't really affect the hero because no one really bought it. Um, the Dark Ascension now provides full unobstructed vision instead of only 990 range. <laughs> which is insane, by the way. And then level 15 talent change from 150 cast range to 15% lifesteal, which you could argue is is better. Mm. You know, it's, it's kind of this way that way. So one of the biggest things that we saw, uh, I think it was a couple of TIs ago, I can't remember the exact date, but um, was Night Stalker was always banned and picked by enemy teams because of the night vision. 
So being able to approach your enemies and see them before they can see you, which is what Night Stalker effectively provides, um, was a game-breaking uh, ability. Um, and it was... It, it just terrified teams because they could get ganked. And, and the thing is, the thing with a team fight is, if you can initiate really, really effectively and well, which is what Night Stalker can do when he has that kind of unobstructed vision now, um, that sets you up really nicely to secure kills or avoid a team fight if you need it. Need to. It can go one of, one of two ways. So, as a tactical piece, I think Night Stalker is probably completely overpowered. And I think not only that, you'll see him flying ahead in the pro scene very considerably, and he'll draft a lot more with these kind of changes. Um, generally, um, the hero is a lot faster, can secure kills much easier, and with the lifesteal has better sustain in a way. I mean, well, if you decide to pick it, of course. So actually, Night Stalker, I think, even in the pro scene, is going to be pretty insane. And if you're familiar with this hero, definitely worth drafting right now. So after Night Stalker comes Sven. Uh, Sven is slightly better. Again, they're all about 55%. These three are all about 55%, but Sven, again, 55% win rate. Um, saw a lot of things that were, frankly, ridiculous. So base movement speed was increased by 15. So for a, a hero that struggles with mobility, that's really, really silly. Silly good, but still silly. Um, Warcry shield health was changed from 110 to 440 to 80 to 170 plus 1, 1.5 to 215, your, your strength. So obviously when he's got his ultimate on, his Warcry shield health is pretty notable. And if he has items, it's even more notable. And then if you have an Omni Knight, giving him even more strength, for example, or a Luna, for example. Again, again you can kind of see the thing stacking up. In fact, you can probably do a whole team combo based around Sven where you give him the maximum possible strength. <laughs> this is pretty broken, to be fair. Um, so, so you know, that, that in and of itself has a drastic improvement. The Stormhammer cooldown was increased, but only very, very slightly. And again, uh, at max level, it was the same. Uh, and the damage was indeed reduced, but by the tiniest of margins when you're at your maximum level. Um, again, in the, in the early parts of the game, that's fine. Um, the biggest buff definitely is the movement speed. And, we'll get, and that uh, splashes onto another hero that's doing insanely well as well. Um, but but fun, fundamentally, the guy now offers you, um, uh, well, you and, you know, I suppose your your team, as it were, with the war cry, um, a huge, huge advantage. A huge advantage that is stronger than ever before and that with right combos and synergies would work insanely well. Um, but to be honest, in many ways, it's the base movement speed increasing for a, a, a hero with that struggles with mobility that makes him, you know, exceptionally strong. And do remember, of course, Sven generally is a very, very good carry. And against teams, the guy is evil. You know, uh, he is widely considered to be one of the easiest heroes to get rampage with because if you can get the team grouped up, stun them all, his cleave will murder the lot if he crits. You know, so he, so uh, you know, ridiculously strong, ridiculously strong. Then finally we come to Necrophos, who again, 55% win rate, nearly 56% win rate. Uh, and this is where you saw the death pulse damage increased from 100 to, to 20 to 100 to 250. So again, after you get, it's the first ability you're going to level up, so you're going to get to that 250 pretty quick. That's pretty great. And then the level 15 talent was increased from plus 20% Ghost Shroud to plus 30. So with Necrophos, um, Necrophos was a spam hero, popular, well, pretty much when 7.0 came out, because everyone was like, oh, wow, look at how they've reworked him. He's way better than he used to be. And so a lot of people, even the lower skill brackets, know how to play him. But that small edge there, that extra sustain and damage, basically is everything you need to take the hero that was kind of off the boil, but now coming in forward. And remember, because all the other heroes have been nerfed, other heroes then start to rise again. And Necrophos is one such example. Finally, it brings me on to another hero that benefited very massively from movement speed, and that's Ursa. Base movement speed was increased by 15, despite the fact that Furious White's damage was actually nerfed. But, here's the thing, it was only nerfed in the early parts of leveling. Once you get Furious Wipes maxed, it does exactly the same damage it did before. Think about that. Now, 
obviously you're gonna level up your fury swipes pretty quickly um because you know obviously it's such an insane ability but with that movement speed of plus 15 that and also he was a very popular hero generally played anyway the guy can just turn up get in your face and then stack those fury swipes and he's able to do that now because of the mo movement speed now, yeah, fine, they don't do as much damage, but it doesn't matter because he's just going to get more on you. He's generally going to be able to chase you down and hit you more. And that's the thing with Ursa. You know, Fury Swipes, one on their own, doesn't is not that great. It's the stack effect. It is the continuous lane harassment effect, effect that makes Ursa ridiculous, frankly. Uh, and, and that is exactly what we're seeing. And so that movement speed buff for both him and Sven um, is actually completely insane. So... That makes him easily, particularly in the pub scene right now, one of the best heroes with a 58% win rate. Hey everybody, that's kind of a, a, a summary there in terms of, of changes in the impact of movement speed. Um, but do look out for those heroes, and of course, uh, even in the lower skill brackets, try them out, practice them a little bit, and it might be worth spamming a few games with them because the chances are you're going to get a pretty good win rate with these heroes. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. There is a link in the description for uh, the giveaway I'm doing. And everybody, thanks so much for watching. Please give the video a like, subscribe, and share. Bye.